lot of cuisines, different cuisines, and uh, it's competitive, if you like, but it's it's more, it's a very, very family sort of scene, if I can say that. It's, um, I see it, I know a lot of the chefs around Wellington, and it's not, it's competitive, but it's not competitive how you think it is. Um, you know, it's very supportive, and everyone's very supportive of each other in, in the different restaurants, and um, you know, if you you do do well, or, or a restaurant picks up, everyone sort of is very encouraging, and, and you know, very always speaking highly of each other. I don't I don't see a real negative side to to the to the scene. It's always very positive, and, and yeah, chefs, the Wellington chef scene is very close and tight knit, um, and they they. Um, you know, they, they, as I say, they always speak very highly of each other. It doesn't seem to be a, a nasty, uh, you know, competitive environment. It has changed and it hasn't changed. That makes sense. It so, does make sense. You know, totally. like there's yeah. sort of, there's, I mean, to the point Paul, Chef Paul made earlier, the one thing about Wellington is its collaborativeness. And people, I say this a lot, so people will have heard it before, but all boats float on a rising tide. So, you know, in Wellington, when one person does well, it brings everybody up with them. So, you know, it the feeling in the community here, and when I say community, the culinary community, is that, you know, we all have, we're all in this one together. And I think part of that comes from being the smaller, a smaller city in a country, you know, we're not the biggest city. So you kind of need to work with each other to be successful. And that really shows through. And and I suppose that's where Visa Wellington on Plate has been successful because people we've had to collaborate to make it work. And you know, sh you know, 11 years on, the festival is different. Obviously, there's a few more rules now than there used to be, and there has to be a few more sort of processes because we've grown as a festival, and we aren't just about local people anymore. We're about attracting people from out of town, people from overseas, and so we need to market the festival, and we need to know information about what people are cooking, and you know, we 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 are a big professional operation. Well, there's all the things that they love. Um, uh, so our festival's divided into sort of different sections. And what we've done by taking it to a month is we've actually split uh, the two key dining parts of the festival out. So we've got something called Dine Wellington, which is a menu, or uh, rather a festival dish focused portion of the festival, which is based around a theme. Um, and this year's theme is Feast Your Senses. So it's all about playing on the senses and not just taste because obviously you actually eat with your nose, surprisingly enough. So, um, you know, sight and smell and even sound are a really important part of eating. Um, and then the other part is our burger competition called Burger Wellington, which is um, overwhelmingly popular, but we've split those apart to give them both their sort of moment in the sun. Um, so that's kind of a big change for this year from the main festival perspective, but um, within the events program that we run, um, well, we, we manage it, but in fact, all of the individual restaurants and event operators run the rest of the events themselves. We've got some really exciting events this year. I mean, every year, I suppose, that's the bit that kind of has no boundaries for people. We kind of just say, be innovative, create something different. Um, and it is, you know, you are only limited by your imagination. But what's really exciting this year is we've got a part of the events program called our Chef Collaboration Series, where we uh, invite chefs from, a couple from New Zealand, but mainly from overseas. Um, and that program has grown over the last few years and we have 20 collaborations this year, which is really exciting for Wellington, really exciting for the chefs and restaurants that are hosting them. And we hope really exciting for the chefs who are coming to visit because they get to come to you know to New Zealand and to Wellington. Some of the main industries that have really um, come to the fore over the last decade or two is the uh, cheese industry. Mm. That's a that's a big one. Um, you know, producing um, goats and sheep milk cheeses, deer milk cheeses is another uh, world first actually. Uh, you know, to be able to, for a company down in South Island producing a, um, a deer milk gouda and, and Havati cheese, that, that's a world first. It hasn't been commercially produced before. So that sort of thing is really exciting to me as a chef. I, I'm, I'm sort of highlighting that on my menu at the moment, actually, you know, the, the deer milk side of things. So there's a lot of a lot of products that, that get made locally that are, that, are, that are absolutely first class and quality as far as quality goes. And uh, you know some of them are as good as the best that yeah. is produced overseas. So it's just fantastic to be able to work with those sort of products that are locally made and produced. Yeah. 
And I suppose actually hyper locally, like, you know, literally on your back doorstep or in the town belt. Um, you know, foraging is not a new concept to people, but I think probably what is a bit more um, foreign or it's certainly becoming a lot more popular now is that sort of really focusing on native ingredients, indigenous ingredients. Um, and, and that's a learning process for chefs as well, because a lot of chefs won't have traditionally used even things, horapito, kawakawa, um, mamaku. These are products that are native to New Zealand, they're plants, um, but haven't traditionally been used because we've replaced them with pepper or tea or, you know, or, or, and we don't have an equivalent. Um, and so there's a lot of experimentation going on. Um, and, you know, it's an education for the chef and an education for the consumer because these are products of New Zealand. Um, but it's also meaning that chefs are being really innovative in what they're doing in their kitchens and what they're doing with these products because it's exciting and it's new. Um, and, you know, we see a lot more of that now. And if we think about the change in 11 years, I would say that's one of the biggest changes. Huge. Is that yeah. like New Zealand taking back, claiming back our products and ingredients um, versus you know 11 years ago when everyone wanted everything imported? And I think it's also just uh, realizing and recognition that we, we have these products. Yeah. On our, on our on our town bound. Literally. On, on our, yeah, exactly. Sort of um, you know five minutes walk up, yeah. the, up and and you you're harvesting. Um, There's a lot of chef secrets around Wellington City that, you know, like where well, you can get, not, not you, so well they're not anymore, anymore but like where no. you can go foraging for like, you know, fresh truffle yeah, on, on the town belt. Por porcini you know, mushrooms. Porcini mushrooms are the big one and, yeah. you know, where the, uh, where the walnut tree is that you've got to park your yeah. car under and stand on the roof to get the walnuts <laughs> and kind of things like that. I, I mean, haven't heard about that yeah, one. Yeah, I'll share that one. Yeah. But, um, but certainly, you know, the probably the sort of, more, more using traditional Maori ingredients is the thing that's becoming, you know, really high on the radar now. And um, there are people going out on foraging missions all the time and taking photos. They're tramping up in the hills and all sorts of things. It's awesome. It's fantastic to see. I think a couple of things, and jump in if you disagree, mm, but no, I no. think um, part of it being the capital and, you know, hark back sort of. 30 years you know capital cities were kind of like the center of business so that's where where business deals were done and um you know you kind of had big restaurants because it was important to have restaurants where you could do those deals um so i think that kind of set a bit of a tone initially and and i suppose set the the foundation in place but i think as a population generally you know wellington's of quite an intellectual population we've got two universities here we've obviously got the government um you know, you've got an inquisitive mind and a well-traveled population. So there's, um, and, and not only that, you've got an amazing business community here. So, you know, you've got businesses like Weta, which have got, I don't know how many ethnicities, but those people demand different styles of eating. They don't just want to eat one type of food. So I suppose it's a bit of a melting pot, but I think that is the reason why we've kind of developed this broad food scene because we've got the demand from our consumers who live here um, and of course, visitors who then come in because again, we are the capital. We get we attract people from every country in the world that has a political interest in New Zealand. So that com that combination um, and that young population and getting younger who have lots of money to spend on eating out. So yes, I think we're getting older. Yeah, we're getting, but, <laughs> Maybe. yeah, but you know, I think that's kind of that's the reason why. Um, I mean, we're very fortunate in Wellington geographically to have this beautiful harbour and the city is tucked into this very tight little environment, yeah. which creates this, a really sort of condensed downtown. And that is a very attractive thing as well, I think, from a oh, regional point of view. That's great. It's, 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 and that, you've had a key point there. I think it's very, it's so, so central. The city's uh, within walking distance. Yeah, everything's everything's walking. within walking distance of each other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like from get to from getting from one restaurant to another or bar to another, it's all very accessible. It's, yeah. it's all very close and tight knit, and it's uh, very, very communal. You, if very you're communal. in a hotel, the options are all around you. Yeah.